Hello and welcome to episode two of Dream Team's brand new quiz show. Don't wait for it for Euro 2020. It's called On the Spot. Yes. I'm Alex Scott and joining me are three guys you all know very well. It's Sean Burke, Jack Townsend and Andy Taylor. I'm going to be here throughout the tournament to test your knowledge on things that have happened in Euro 2020 so far. Okay, guys, how are you feeling after the England v Scotland game? And what do you think? Sure, you've got a big smile on your face. What are you saying? <laughs> well, I, I'm, of course, neutral in this. Um, <laughs> but I, I, I watched it with my housemates on Friday and one of them is Scottish and the other one is English. And I was just sat in between and it was just so funny seeing the polar opposite reactions to the same results for either team. Scottish housemate was jumping for joy as if they'd won. And then the English housemate was just pure sorrow. That's the thing though, I suppose from the Scotland point of view, it does feel like as if it was a win for them. It was massive. And they've still got a chance as well now. I mean, they just need to win the final game. Oh, to play for. Well, guys, everyone at home, we want you to play along as normal. Let us know what your final scores are in the comments below. On screen now are the current standings. And Sean has taken an early lead after his surprising dominant performance in the show. And Andy, I know you're already looking down the less said about your performance. <laughs> the Drifty Euros fantasy football game is also well underway and you have 20 transfers to use whenever you want throughout the tournament. So make sure you use them to give yourself a chance of getting your hands on the 50,000 prize pot. Okay, guys, question though. How are you Dream Team's getting on? I've gotten points since our last episode, so that's the main thing. Griezmann I had in my team, so I was quite happy with that. And he's kind of player that gets goals and assists because he takes corners and free kicks. And so that paid off. And also I had Donnarumma in goals, the Italian goalkeeper, and I think they've had three clean sheets. Italian's looking strong. I'm slightly lagging behind. I'm going to go all in on Germany, I think, to do over Hungary, yeah. A lot of teams aren't playing their full strength sides now because they're obviously through, whereas Germany still need three points. Them against Hungary, given that they've smashed Portugal with four goals, suggests that that could be one to get on board. Yeah, but Hungary, defensively, they're so organised and solid. Portugal found them hard to break down. Obviously, the French did as well. I don't know. I know, I know. But I just think if Germany is scoring four past Ruben Diaz, they've got to be able to score at least one or two past the Hungarians. But you never know. Jack, why are you staying quiet? Because I'm doing terribly. So you, you've reminded everyone to make 20 transfers, but I am the worst for remembering to make yeah. transfers. OK, guys, it's the same as last time. Quiz shootout, five rounds, one winner. And finally, if you're not already following Dream Team on all platforms, then hit that subscribe button right now. OK, shall we kick things off? Question one. On Friday, we watched Scotland v England play out a <coughs> nil-nil draw. That was a nil-nil draw. Despite not scoring, the Scots went home feeling like they'd taken something from the game. Can you tell me what export Scott has scored the most Premier League goals? Uh, Look out the window, Jack. It's not going to help you. I know. I'm just looking for <laughs> answers somewhere. <laughs> Names down. Have we got any? Put something down. Okay, right, Jack. I'm coming to you then. What have you got? My mind went completely blank there. I've just gone for Scott McTominay. I know he's scored. <laughs> he's not going to get anywhere near this. All right, Andy, who you got? I'm going for big Duncan Ferguson. I feel like he's got his head on quite a few goals. Sure. I panicked. And uh, just because he's been doing a lot of commentating lately, I said Ali McCoyst. We all love a bit of Ali McCoyst on the commentary. But guys, the answer is in. Andy, you're right. It is big Duncan Ferguson. Oh Get in there. Talking about the England-Scotland game, what individuals impress you the most? Well, it's got to be Billy Gilmore, right? I think everyone just enjoys those players these days. It's quite nice to see. You know, say like how Kante gets a lot of recognition for just kind of a, a lot of the work off the ball. I think it's quite fashionable now for people to spot those players, whereas 10 years ago, it was more just about whoever scores the most goals, we just give the Man of the Match award to. So I think it's quite refreshing to see someone like him take the Man of the Match award away. I have to like do a shout out for my Arsenal guy though, Kieran Tierney. Just his energy and just, you know, he's one of those players that plays like with just full passion and heart. And I think there was one bit where him and Phil Foden were like marking each other on the corner. Like you see obviously enemies, Scotland, England, but they were just like giggling and laughing, like the battle, like they were really loving it. Who else are you guys were impressed with? I was impressed by the entire Scottish defence. It was summed up by the end uh, with that 
absolute scramble in the Scottish box. I think it was in the 90 plus yeah, minutes. Yeah, McTominay was on all fours, wasn't he? <laughs> he was doing everything. Yeah. Get it. He was turning into a sumo wrestling match briefly for a moment. Turn it forward with like England, four points, it's still in their own hands. It's not like all doom and gloom. I suppose mm. it's such an expectation of like, this like wealth of talent and flair and because everyone's not seeing it, but actually it's still okay. Like we're still mm. on, it's like get to the knockout stages. And then as long as the performances are going up, it's like tournament football. Look at Portugal when they won it last time. Yeah. They didn't, didn't, they didn't even win a game in the, yeah. uh, the group stages. Exactly. Right, shall we move on to question two? Yeah, come on. Can you tell me who Cheltenham Town's Daniel O'Shaughnessy is representing at the Euros? And for a bonus point, Sean, I'm looking at you. Can you tell us who he isn't? I'm sure I saw something about this pop up on my timeline. <laughs> what timeline have you got going? <laughs> you following? <laughs> Random Irish crap. <laughs> <laughs> Sean, I'll come to you last then. But right, go on. You always look so like surprised and looking out the window, trying to find inspiration. I know it's not Ireland. I went with Austria for some reason. Andy? I think it's Finland. I'm sure I've seen him line up in a Finland game that I've watched. Sean? I said the same. I said Finland's not Ireland. Sean knows these stuff. The answer is Finland. An Irish father and a Finnish mother. Question three. Becky, you ready? Come on. Desperately need a point. <laughs> no nation has ever done the European double, Eurovision Song Contest and European finals. So can you tell me which nation could do it this year? Yes, I want you to name the winners of the Eurovision Song Contest, guys. I love Eurovision. I'm so <laughs> glad you asked this question. Almost got taken away from you as well. Oh, Townsend, did you watch it as well? Go on then, Andy, we're starting with you. Gonna go Hungary. Go on, Jack. Come to you. I've gone Italy. Oh, oh Sean. Yeah, Italy. They are the correct answers. You did clearly <laughs> watch it. <laughs> if I've come here for a football quiz and it's turned into a music <laughs> quiz, and that's <laughs> the one thing that I'm not very good at. So wait, don't give me that. Did you not see like us on the panel the other day at half time? Mike and Richards and Ashley Williams having a sing song. Oh, yeah, he loves football and music. <laughs> Alex, what's it like working with Micah, by the way? Because he just seems like an absolute barrel of laughs. And... Yeah, because I think that's why we all started playing football and loving football. Yes, you can analyse him, like, we know when to be serious and break games down. But there's, like, stuff where you'd be laughing at home if you saw something happen. So it's the same in the studio. We're, like, just loving life. We get to sit there and talk about football, you know? Like, I'm not going to be depressed about that or, like, <laughs> you know? Yeah. Yeah. Like we're just two people absolutely buzzing and loving our job. So we just bounce off each other, I think. Let's go to question four. Robin Gosens was immense in Germany's 4-2 win over Holders Portugal. But can you tell me which country he plays his club football in and for which team? Well, he scored 20 goals in the last two seasons. Yeah. Incredible. Got signed locked in. Another wrong answer. What have you got locked in? Go on. He plays in France and maybe plays for Leon. So I can see why you're not doing well in June team now. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> what have you got? I said he plays in Italy. I wasn't sure what club, so I said Atalanta. Sure. Oh, so <laughs> give me that. While well, he's sitting there with Google. Like, <laughs> um, yeah, I've gone, I've gone Italy and, and Atalanta as well, though. And Andy and Sean, you are correct. What's your thoughts of these games so far? Is there been a player you've not really watched before that you have been impressed with? By Isak up top for Sweden. It's just the fact that he's 21. He scored goals in a very good league already. He's got the most dribbles of um, anyone in the, the second round of fixtures as well, which is always like a good thing. I think that's kind of one of the things that England get criticised for is the, the lack of taking on players, you know, like actually just taking a risk. And that looks like exactly what he wants to do. Because I was doing that game with Micah actually. <clears throat> and Micah was like nearly out of his chair at one point because he picked the ball up on the halfway line and like just kept dribbling and dribbling. I think he nutmegged a player and it was just the only thing that was missing is I think he hit the side netting at the end of it all. He was like their go-to magic player. You could see every time the ball was going to go to him that they were going to create something. Question five. I, don't, I feel like you're that underdog that everyone's rooting for. 
Oh. We need like sort of a golden goal kind of question here. <laughs> so uh, a winner takes all of this one. Question five. Come on, Jack. The last time England played the Czech Republic was to qualify for this tournament. We won 5 0 at Wembley, but can you tell me who scored a hat trick in that game? Go, go Gary Cale again. That did you well last time. <laughs> <laughs> It's one really obvious potential answer. Well, this is it. How can it not that... be? How can it not be that one? Yeah. How can it not be? I think that's what they're trying to throw us off the same. Mm. Okay, sure. And I'll come to you now. Who have you got? Uh, I went for the obvious and went Harry Kane. Andy, it's got to be Harry Kane. Jack, you going same or different? I've gone Gary Cahill again. No, um, um, <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm Harry Kane as well. Guys, it is not the correct answer. It is actually Raheem Sterling. Oh, get yeah. for that at all. That's why Gary Southgate is sticking with him. Yeah, <laughs> Looking at England's last game, how do you see it playing out? Does he stick with certain players? Is he going to change it up? Southgate's clearly a very loyal manager as well, so I don't think it would send the right message to his players if he started to change that after kind of one tricky result. I reckon there'd be like, there's not going to be like mass changes, like maybe one or two because you always do that kind of in a tournament when you look at certain areas to exploit a different team but actually it's still like making sure you get a job done so mm -hmm. it's like how you said it's not changing it and being like oh yeah now we're totally going to play a different style of play it's actually doing a job and then maybe in the second half that's when things open up or a team might get tired that you bring on players then that might exploit those those positions even more that I think. Right, guys, you know what? The results are in. And Jack, you'll be happy to know that you're nowhere near. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> but guys, we do have a tiebreaker between Andy and Sean, who both have five points. So, sudden death, which means we are now going to go to another question and the closest answer wins. Sean and Andy, are you ready? How many goals were scored at the last Euros in 2016? Andy, I'm going to go to you first. 137. Whoa. Okay, Sean. I said 128. The answer is 108. Oh, Sean's taking another point. <laughs> <laughs> Again, congratulations. How are you feeling? What? I'm buzzing. I'm buzzing right now. Uh, I'm always, I'm constantly mocked uh, on this show, on this channel, for my lack of football knowledge. Well, Eurovision and football, Andy, both of those ticked <laughs> off in one episode. Sean, congratulations. Another win in another episode. Jack, there's still hope for you. I've got everything crossed. This has been On The Spot and we will be back again for our next instalment of Euro Trivia. Maybe a bit of Eurovision Song Contest thrown in there as well, just for fun. But remember to let us know how you get on in the comments below. We will see you on the next episode. <laughs>